William, are you ready for the weekend? Oh, Judy, I am ready for a big weekend. We'll tell you how big next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. As you can see, we are deep in the tulip fields at the Wooden Shoe Tulip Farm. And later on in the show, we're going to be talking to Barb about this peak bloom time and the extension of this year's festival. And also coming up in the show today, we'll take you to the Oregon Garden and tell you how to get in free. And we'll also be chatting with Jan McNeilan about our tips of the month. But coming up first, Margie with colorful Easter baskets. So I'm standing here with Margie of Margie's Farm and Garden. And Margie, you know, this is Easter weekend. Yes. So a lot of people actually really still love to buy flowers or plants for Easter as gifts, right? Of course, of so course. tell me about these beauties right here. What are they? Oh, right now we have our dahlias just coming into full bloom. These are our galleon dahlias, a little bit of a larger dahlia, beautiful colors. They just come in all different shades, it's variegated, solid colors. Beautiful. And, I, and what I do love about dahlias is their variety within the, that family because these really are a rich variety of so many different colors. Oh, and it's, this isn't even all of them. No, we have <laughs> even more. It's just beautiful. They're amazing and they'll bloom for you all summer long right, through the fall. Right. And then uh, this is stunning, but this is just one type of plant that blooms that you guys have at this time of year. You have a huge selection of stunningly beautiful blooming plants. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, yes, we have a large selection, geraniums, uh, yeah. petunias, million bells, uh, all, all kinds of things you want blooming. And then what I love about what you're doing here for, the, for this Easter weekend is, of course, we're going to talk about plants and, and how fun they are. But you have some wonderful ideas. I'm going to just call them Easter baskets Easter, because that's what yes. they remind me of, even the little animal things here. And you've, can, you've done some beautiful planting, so let's go over some of them. Oh, yes. We have these amazing, cute little colored animals, uh, zebras, pelicans, cats, dogs, all sorts of things. Some of them we have planted. Some, like this owl, we've left empty, so you can do your own creativity and plant it yourself. Um, some of them aren't planters, but just a great color addition. Fun. And such a fun gift to bring someone. You're and going I, to their house for dinner on Easter. Right, right. Uh, just a nice gift. But I loved, I have to show everybody this. Some of them even have like these real little... Kind of like a boggle head. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's cute. adorable. It's adorable. And then you've also got some more, what I think are elegant looking, really beautiful baskets as well. Tell me about these. Yes, these you can definitely call your Easter basket. Right. We have right. them planted in all different types of flowers. I love the ones with the fern and little begonias around them. Such a great gift that you can put on your center of your table during dinner and right. then you can move it outside and it'll last for you all summer long again. And that's one of the things I love about pretty much I'm just taking a quick glance at all of these. I see that in every basket you guys have made. This isn't just a seasonal gift basket. This is a basket that's going to last all season long. That's a good point. That's how we plant our baskets here. The gifty ones, the hanging baskets are baskets that will last all summer. Right. Um, so it's not just something that you have for a month or something here blooming. It's going to last for you throughout the whole um, till fall, like yeah. freezing. Yeah. And then I've got to ask a question about these baskets. Do you also sell them just undone? We have them empty also. Wonderful. So if you want to do your own creativity and put your own flower and touches in them, you can buy all the components here, the empty basket, all the flowers. And, and then you guys are more yourself. than willing. Somebody's going to help you if you need some help. Oh, even for sure. That, and if they? you, yeah, we'll help you pick out things. But also if you pick them out, we'll go help you plant them up real quick while you're waiting. And I have to say that that I think this is the first time you're going to do this, but you're actually going to be open on Easter tomorrow, aren't you? We will be open tomorrow. We're going to be doing our holiday hours from 11 to 3 on Easter. It's going to be such a beautiful day. We'll, we'll be here to help. And too, you know, it, because you're going to be open, I know that there's times when I get so busy, I forget. And it's not that I don't want to forget to give somebody that I'm visiting yeah. a gift. I want to always, but I forget. And so it's great that you will be open on Easter we, Sunday for those of us open. who forget. <laughs> for those of you who are last minute, we'll be open on Easter and we have gifts from, you know, very little up to larger amounts. So right. there's something for everybody that you can that you can give for a gift. Well, there you have it. So for more information, as always, we will invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website, get all that information, come out and celebrate Easter with a beautiful basket or a wonderful flower. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.
since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonite has the answer. Are you tired of pulling those persistent unwanted weeds? The answer is Bonite Cleanup Weed and Grass Killer. Cleanup kills all unwanted weeds and grasses down to the roots so your summer garden gets a clean start. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Celebrate a spring tradition. Visit the Holda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Tour Holda's Victorian home and gift shop. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. So I'm standing here with the wonderful Jan McNeilan, and of course, Jan, this is the tips of the month. Right, here so we let's, go. Yeah, let's jump right in. What okay. do you got for us? Uh, my first one is tomato hornworms. Okay. And they're, you're not going to see them this time of year, but they're the size of your finger. Wow. Your index finger. So you're going to notice they're big. if you see them. Yeah, <laughs> you are. But here, in some places, they are pests. I mean, they're big time pests. But here, they're really not. And if you don't want to have them on your plant, you can move them to something they don't like or just pick them off. But there was a, a question that we got that somebody said that uh, tomato hornworms were pets. It's like, okay. no, they're raised to feed pets, oh, like so lizards and iguanas probably. and things like that. So people do raise worms, mealworms, right, things right. for their pets. So I just wanted to clear that up. And, and, here, and what do they turn into? They turn into, there's a lot of different kinds of hornworms. Uh -huh. This is just a rough drawing. Uh, but they turn into a hawk moth, a hummingbird moth. Wow. Um, but there's also another uh, larva that gets about that big that is a polyphemus that turns into a great big gorgeous moth with eyes on it like an owl. Oh, wow. Anyway, wow. so that's just an idea. Somebody can look it up more and see, see more, information more information about it. But not a huge issue that we have here. No, it's not. Area. But it's neat when you see it. It's right, fun. Right. It's fun. Um, apical dominance, meaning the very top of the plant is the one that has the most hormones in it to grow. So if you top a tree or a shrub, uh, if you take that top leader off, the bottom part is going to shoot water sprouts and other. Okay. And so this is an example. This is a, a dwarf magnolia. Which you pruned, pruned last year, right? I pruned it hard. We'll see what it does. But you can see that, that I left one that's tall. Right. And guess what? It's got bu buds on it that are ready to bloom. So it has the most energy and strength in it right now. And then the rest of these will set buds for next year. Which means you can still prune it in the future. Sure. But w once you get that established, you're not going to get like a, a like a shrubby ball of a plant. No, then. no, okay. no. So, but what I, you know, we've done some other pruning in the back and uh, we've topped some of them. We'll see what happens with the water shout sprouts. Right, right, see what yeah. happens. Um, the other thing is traps for aphids, white flies, things like that. 
um, for in the greenhouse for white flies and aphids. And I'll move the cat. <laughs> and Sorry, Ducky. Gold Ducky. <laughs> um, you make sticky traps, and you can use Vaseline, you can use uh, Elmer's glue, you can use uh, uh, rubber cement, and just literally paste it on a piece of cardboard or whatever. There's blue, there's green, and there's yellow, and it doesn't make any difference what it is. It can be a can of STP or whatever, just as oh, long so as it's just, yellow. Okay, I get it. Then now. you can put this on and, uh, and put it in. You can put it in flats in your greenhouse. You can hang it from a tree, do whatever you need to do, depending on if you're after uh, flying insects or not. And uh, I'll give you an idea of what these colors uh, uh, get. Uh, yellow is white flies, fungus gnats, winged aphids. The wing kind, not the ones without, because right. they're not right. going to run around. Uh, leaf miners and some parasites. Wow. That's for yellow. Green will get aphids, spittle bugs, and leaf hoppers. So they actually, the colors actually then matter. Right? Yeah, the color matters because of what it's going to attract. Um, but you're going to, uh, depends on if you're wanting to spray, it's, it's as a monitor trap so you know that they're there right. if you want to spray. You, and if you just want to get them stuck to it, the more traps you have, you may take care of your problem, problem without kind of doing anything. Well, you know, we always get great information, often stuff that I'm even unaware of that you can do in your garden. So, uh, you know, we'll do this all again for, uh, next month for more tips in the garden. Thank you so much, Jen. Okay, we'll do it again. Your garden begins here with the people in purple, the ones you meet inside each Owl's Garden and Home store. More than ever, we're working to bring you a truly exceptional gardening experience. Brighten up your yard with flats of locally grown annuals. Mix and match your favorites and save $5 per flat. The sale ends soon, so hurry in for the best selection. The best gardens begin and continue to grow at Owl's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and Wilsonville. Or visit us at owls-gardencenter.com. Your garden is only as good as the ingredients you use. That's where Black Gold can help. Black Gold Seedling Mix is formulated for successful seed germination and strong seedling growth. Black Gold Seedling Mix is organic and OMRI listed, so you can start this year's organic garden outright. Look for Black Gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terracasa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terracasa. Terracasa in downtown Damascus. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Hanging baskets are ready. A variety of sizes and styles are available in gorgeous color mixes. There's something for every taste and budget. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. So I'm sitting here with Meg from Bartlett Tree Experts. And first of all, Meg, tell me, what, it, what is your job here and what is it that you do? Sure. So I'm the Diagnostic Services Manager at the Bartlett Tree Research Lab. So that is a lab for Bartlett Tree Experts Company. It's located in Charlotte, North Carolina. And my small group within the lab diagnoses plant stress, disease, and pest problems from all over the U.S. and Canada. So that's got to be a job that is very impressive. So you really look at not just, you know, trees in the general sense of pruning and all that, you really look at the things that 
that cause a cause and effect on trees, right? Exactly, exactly. All health problems are definitely our purview within the lab. So then maybe we could talk about some of the problems that we have here in the, in the Northwest. Like, uh, tell me about like mites. Mites seem to be a big problem. Sure, sure. So there's a couple different common kinds that you might see here in the Pacific Northwest. A couple that come to mind are spider mites and then a really weird mite called an areophyid mite. So you're probably more familiar with spider mites. They have eight legs. They're more closely related to spiders and they feed on the plant by putting these little pointed mouth parts in and sucking the juice out. So they suck the green color out too and it leaves these little tiny yellow spots behind and it can make your plant look discolored in general. And do you find, because I, 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 that sounds like it could also be often confused like an, a, a fertilization problem. Is that something that we confuse that with a lot? It can be, yes. Um, there are a lot of reasons that plants can turn funny colors and that's why I love submitting samples to a diagnostic lab because that's our main job is figuring out, okay, is it a nutrient problem? Is it a pest problem? Um, and sometimes it's really great to get a diagnostician involved to figure out exactly what's going on with your plant so you can treat it properly. Right, right, because you don't want to waste money on doing something that will have no effect on it to begin with. Exactly. <laughs> so then another thing that I see a lot of in the Pacific Northwest is scales, but it seems like there's different kinds of scale. Is that accurate? There are different kinds of scales. There's two different groups, armored scales and soft scales. They're both very strange, tiny, almost microscopic little sucking pests. They have a long, thin mouth part that they suck juice out of the plant with. And the armored scales have a cover that you can pop off and separate from the body. They don't produce honeydew, which is a sticky, sugary material. And then soft scales are coated in wax, so you can't pop that cover off. They feed in the phloem cells, so that's a little bit of a technical term. It, it just means the, the cells in the plant that conduct sugar. So oh. they're feeding on a lot of extra sugary material, and they produce this honeydew, this sticky, sugary liquid as a waste byproduct. And that is often then what we see on leaves. It looks like sooty black stuff is from that? Exactly. So the honeydew is this liquid and then it's a very weird biology thing. This black fungus called sooty mold grows only on that honeydew. So when you have sooty mold, you know you have a sucking pest because the honeydew is there for it to grow on. Wow, wow. <laughs> it, it, it's really amazing to me about how you can find out things, you know, science will teach you stuff and you go, wow, I didn't know that. So I did not know that there was two different kinds and I didn't know one would make the sooty mold and the other one wouldn't. Exactly. So that's definitely my special thing to know for work. <laughs> so then, you know, we, we've had some issues with lace bug sure. lately in the, in the last few years. Uh, tell me about that one. So that's another sucking pest. Um, they're kind of cool and really beautiful. The adult has wings that look like stained glass windows in a church. Um, and they have a little pointy beak and they suck the juice out of the plant as well. And they cause those little tiny spots called stippling. It could look like spider mite damage. So that's another pest that causes that same kind of damage. So then clarify for me, because I, I often get these confused, and I think lace wing, though, is actually a good insect, right, that does stuff. Yes, so that's confusing. So lace bug is the pest, and lace wing is the beneficial. So in the summertime, when you have a light on on your porch, you'll sometimes see adult lace wings. They have very feathery, lacy wings, and they'll fly toward the light. And the babies, the larvae of those, are predators. So they will find wow. soft-bodied insects like aphids and pierce them with big jaws and suck the juice out. <laughs> and we can't be upset with them for doing that, can we? <laughs> no, it's they're, they're natural control. One of the things that I find fascinating that I've learned from you is that there is a part of the insect world that is cannibalism as well so sometimes what what they feed on is actually what we think is beneficial might be bad in the other part of the group sure sure so there are all kinds of beneficial insects that feed on other insects and sometimes they are in the same group wow. so for example if you have a spider mite problem on your plant there are also beneficial mites and their food is the spider mites <laughs> and tell me another kind of insect that is, is a positive one for us sure so one that a lot of people know about is actually ladybugs um, and so a lot of people know that if you have aphids those little sucking pests the adult ladybugs will eat those and so will the baby ladybugs so Explain to me what exactly is arthrips. 
Sure, so they're another small sucking pest. They're very tiny and they're shaped like a sliver almost. So they usually come in yellow or black or some combination of the two. Um, and they feed on plants as well and they cause slightly different symptoms. Um, they have a very small sucking mouth part and sometimes your plant can look like it's turning silver or it's more distorted or deformed. Huh. And they also leave spots of poo on the leaf. So we call it fecal spotting. They're little brown or black flecks um, and then the thrip are sometimes present as well. And one other fun fact about thrips is that they have wings that are shaped like feathers. They're very strange wings. So you actually, because you uh, work for Bartlett, people can actually contact Bartlett and, and if they have questions, I mean, you might be possibly one of them that actually looks into this and figures out what's going on. Exactly. So you would contact Bartlett, talk to one of our arborist representatives, and then they will, um, you know, get in contact with the lab for you to answer questions. Well, you know, all of us love our gardens and we want them to be beautiful and healthy. So for more information and on how you can get this stuff, not only at their website, but then contact people who can really give you the true information about what's going on, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Thank you so much, Meg. Thank you so much. I am at the Winchu Tulip Festival and Garden Time was here about three weeks ago and Barb, we were here but there was maybe one row of tulips blooming. Well, maybe two. Oh, maybe there two. Was a right. little bit of color but not, you know, nothing like we have out here oh now. Oh my gosh. And you know, it hasn't been the best weather and today is a Monday so we're kind of cheating. It's not Saturday and I have heard Somebody, Birdie, told me that's going to be a little bit nicer on Saturday. Oh, I hope so. We're ready. We're so ready for some nice weather. And, you know, when the, the color comes out, we get the heat like that, it warms up, oh, yeah. they just pop. You know, you think they're spectacular today. You see them when the, the sun comes out, they're beautiful. Uh, and, you know, it's Easter weekend, so are some, some special things oh, going on? lots of activities. We have an Easter egg hunt, and we have a sunrise service oh. on Sunday. Um, but, but just come out with, there's kids' activities, there's oh, wine fun. tasting. We have all sorts of activities going on, things going on. Nice. But really, the highlight is the field. Oh, my gosh, it is. And really, there's photo ops so don't forget your camera and all the kids and all the family because that's the most fun part too. Well it really is and you know you can get in at sunrise too and take sunrise pictures Ooh. and that's uh, there, there's nothing like being out here in the early morning listening to the birds and catching that sunrise. Aww. Now you can get in with the season pass. Oh that is so, nice yeah. yeah and then there's some other events like you can have a dinner in the garden? Yeah petals and we're calling it petals and plate and that's the 29th um, 27th right? 27th okay. we're having that out here and, then, and it, if we set the table right in the field it'd be served beautiful. plated plated dinner it's just oh it's beautiful out here and I know the best part is you've extended the time of the festival we have we're going to be open through May 5th we've been we've had such a cool month mm -hmm. um, we'll be open through May 5th and, and the color will be great we have varieties out there that haven't even opened yet it's not too late to come out here, see all the beauty. And Barb, where can we find out the information? Because you have a, a report on the um, all we kinds do. We of information. We have a field report um, uh, on our website. It tells you the condition of the field, kind of what's going on. It'll show um, pictures from the previous day, um, as well as all the activities we have coming up. Uh, follow us also on Instagram and Facebook. We, we have a daily report there, too. Uh, so you get in, up to date information. So please go to Garden Time and you can find out all the information and come on out. Thanks so much, Barb. You're welcome. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. What's even better than buying a brand new Subaru? How about getting the best possible value from a place that's as trustworthy and dependable as a Subaru? At Capital Subaru, your satisfaction is our goal, which is why you can always expect the kind of service and selection that keeps you smiling. From our lot to your driveway. Go the distance this spring in the smart and efficient new 2019 Subaru Outback 2.5i Limited. Lease it now, just $289 per month. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. 
For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Stop and smell a rose, hear a child laugh, see the beauty that is Oregon. You will find all this and more at the Oregon Garden in historic Silverton. 400-year-old oaks, edible landscapes, a children's garden. Spend a day leisurely strolling the garden or attend one of many garden events or classes. You can even extend your stay with a night at the Oregon Garden Resort. Enjoy the garden that showcases the diverse botanical beauty of our state, the Oregon Garden. Well, I think everybody should have a Japanese maple in their garden, but sometimes they're too big. So I'm with Brian Sugawa at Sugawa's Nursery. And Brian, you really selected some Japanese maples that maybe are a little bit smaller for smaller gardens. Yeah, thanks, Judy. Um, well, that's what's nice about Japanese maples to me is changing all the time, you know, yeah. so they don't stay the same color and always enhance the yard with different colors, contrast. But yeah, I brought in a nice little selection for, um, for you to see with all the different ones. So what is this have. one over here? This one right in front of me, you can see the, Pretty. with the fresh new foliage uh, just right now unfolding, we, it's gonna be yellow bird, which pretty much just stays all this nice green color throughout the season, it will chartreuse and the yellow really comes in the fall for the yellow fall coloration. Nice. Likes to get pretty good size, you know, 12 plus, mm -hmm. which most of these Japanese maples do. We did bring in a couple little dwarfer ones or more uh, compact. But most of them right around 12, 15 foot tall, and you can control them easily by pruning them. But yeah, that's a, a very nice one. Right and that's there. Not, still not too big. I mean, 12 feet in a garden, that's really not and so big. And you can control it a lot right. smaller, especially growing in a container. Easily mm -hmm. controlled, you know, if you don't, if you take the leader out or control it a little bit more, you can keep them at pretty much the size you would like. I love this one with that red edge. That's beautiful. Now, one of our favorites, uh, Sumagaki. Well, what it's going to do is kind of have this, as it unfolds, you'll get this more of a burgundy kind of a tip on it with that char same kind of a color, the chartreuse green, but it kind of goes to more of a medium, kind of an olive green, but nice throughout the whole season. Kind Beautiful. of adds a little interest in there with the tips like that. And I like that you plant, you gave us some, some ideas of companion plants because in a container, even in a bed, you yeah. want something else that will kind of contrast or complement. I think they can always, especially, you know, if we're doing a, a container 12 months out of the year while well, maple's losing their lease, we would probably want to, you know, there's little ground covers you can do, dwarf conifers for some yellows, golds. Mm -hmm. uh, always adds a little more something to look at throughout 12 right. months out of the year. So mondo grass and wire vine, really something nice to put yeah, at the bottom. Or you can do some flowering, you know, just as long as it didn't take over, you can right. probably consider a lot of plants to grow in there as long as it stays small. So this one is Shana, burgundy right yeah. off the bat, which is beautiful. Very bright. It's going to unfold uh, Shana. It's like, they call it uh, like a dwarf type uh, blood good, but it, it, it is really uh, kind of a semi-dwarfer variety. I think of it about six foot tall, eight foot at the And foot really more round. So yes. different. Very stocky bush, twiggy mm -hmm. growth. It does like to grow upright and easy control too. When, when, uh, you can easy control this at uh, whatever height you like in between that, those I just mentioned. Very but, cool. Yeah. But you can see the yellow against Doesn't the Doesn't that look nice? Yeah. It That's a nice idea. Kind of nice little contrast with each other. Pretty. And now we're going to a taller red leafed one. Yeah. Um, this one, it doesn't show too much. It's got some what we call veining in there, but it's going to be kind of like this model. It have a little variegation in that, what we call the midrib. Kind of a newer one for us, uh, Amaji Shigura. Beautiful. So, um, but what's going to be interesting, it's going to have a little darker on the outside of the margin with a little pinkish in the inside. Pretty. Uh, kind of interested to see what it's going to do for us. Uh, for me and uh, the nursery here, it's kind of a newer one. That and you're really always seen. getting some new ones in because well, you have a great selection of right. Japanese maples, but even you get new ones in. Well, that, it seems like the they're trial. coming out with new ones, and I don't know how many there is. But <laughs> it would be, um, I, I don't even know where to begin, but there's just. Uh, <laughs> Come on out and see them. Exactly. There's always new ones in. And this one is so pretty. I love the flowers. They're such a dark red against yeah. this kind of gold foliage. Well, that's just it. You know, they all have a little bit different. Uh, some kind of added interest into this, mm -hmm. but you're right. When this is uh, coming out, you can see a softer new growth. Um, this one is another newer one for us, Harasumi, Harasumi. 
So Very there's pretty. my Japanese for you, but uh, I don't, another new one, I don't really know too much about it. It's, uh, we're waiting to see what it's gonna really do, right. but uh, you can see it's kind of be kind of more of a yellowish uh, with a little uh, darker on the out outside of the leaf with red in there. And then look at this, it's a, like a little pine. It's a variegated Japanese white pine, but look at that variegation. It just kind of like sparkles, sparklers. Yeah, it does. So Brian, I think what we really want to tell everybody is that you have a wide selection of Japanese right. maples, really for any garden. Yes, just for all sizes and all spaces in the yard, you bet, there'd be one to fit all. And so if we do have questions about pruning it or taking care of it in a container in a bed, you guys all have that um, We do, to. we try to give the advice needed container, whatever the project would be, uh, we have the containers to go with it oh, wow. and uh, pruning all the, all the requirements that we can give, we'd sure be get, glad to give you the advice. Uh, well, I have to come up to Woodland, Washington to Sagawa Nursery, come see all the plants, but especially their Japanese maple collection. Thanks so much, Brian. Thanks, Judy. So I am out here with Allie and we are at the Oregon Garden and you know Allie there's so much beauty and blooms and everything fun is happening right now out here but this Saturday all day long you have something really fun happening with a twist. Tell me what that is. Yeah so it's Earth Day at the Oregon Garden. Um, it is a free event uh, put on by Marion County so they kind of help us out and we're able to put on this free event for everyone so they can come here explore the garden and meet with tons of really cool vendors and we have alpacas here wow. so it's it's really fun and, and so the free event is you get you get in free then i mean this the event is the garden yes that, oh, that's yeah. so cool that's excellent and tell me what else is happening yeah so uh we have lots of food and drinks here we have live music um lots of activities for kids kind of thing so you can build your own recyclable bags oh wow cool. yeah that's super fun um and so yeah, like I said, it's free. You get into the garden, you can explore it. We have the tram running, so you can get the full, you know, narrated tram tour. And parking is five dollars, but we do have a lot of really off-site parking lots, right. um, so you can take the shuttle for free. So, Ella, you also have another really fun event happening, though. Yeah. So we have the Garden Gala, and so that's a ticketed event. Um, it's sixty-five dollars for OAN members or garden members and then $80 for non-members, or you can buy a table. Um, so that seats up to eight people, and you can wow. buy that on the line. Um, but it's a silent auction, you got garden tours, we have some speakers, and we have a wine dinner. So well. this is the one that the Richie Stefan is gonna be at, right? Which, those of us who love the posters of great plant picks, we know exactly what that means. He's gonna be here and talking at that. That's gonna be fun. Yes, yeah. it's gonna be great. So, you know, if you think to yourself, well, there's a lot of great things happening out of the gardens besides just beautiful plants. You can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website, come out, buy the tickets, get everything set up, and come in and enjoy a great time. Thank you so much, Thank Ellie. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit portlandnursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. Nothing is more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis, and your chance to see the Queen of Vines is at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farms. To learn more about the garden, get directions, or learn about garden events, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. Your center for home and garden decor, Garden Gallery Ironworks has everything you need to make your home a showcase. For the inside, we have a great selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items, and our farmhouse style department is full of one-of-a-kind gifts. For the outside, we have arbors, trellises, planting beds, and garden decor. Everything to make your neighbors jealous. Check out our new website and then come visit us in Hubbard. Garden Gallery Ironworks. Millions of tulip bulbs transform the Iverson Farm into one of Oregon's most stunning events. The family invites you to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. Explore our tulip fields and market, kids' activities, food, and wooden shoe wine. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival open daily now through April 29th. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. 
were filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. So I'm standing here at French Prairie Gardens and I'm here with Stacy. And Stacy, we're gonna talk about some of these wonderfully cool new varieties that you have in your hanging basket. Yes, yes, so every year we look at our combinations and see how they do. Um, and then we like to put in new things. So this one's the Starry Sky Burgundy. Wow. A lot like the Night Sky, which is purple, and the Pink Sky that's pink. This is a brand new one. It's got great habit, nice trailer, and great color. And I love that, that to me, through my vision of looking at them, they really look like velvet. Oh, I mean, yeah. They're stunning. Yeah, and each one has a different time that it'll, it'll start with little, bit of, little bitty specks, and then it'll go bigger ones. Um, so it just kind of depends on where it is in the maturity level of the flower. Right, which is one of the cool things about them is they're not just always the same. They actually change as they grow. Yes, yes. And also, as the heat gets more intense, the less the spots start. So you might see them more in the spring and more in the fall. It just kind of depends on our weather in Oregon. Wow, that's, and that's a fascinating thing. And is there any other new things that you brought in this year? Oh, yes, yes. We have all sorts of different varieties of new million bells and new bacopa. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking for, but we have it. Wonderful. And then, you know, what I love too about you guys is you do such a great job of growing these. So once we get these beautiful things to our own homes, what do we do for care? Well, we want to make sure we water it every day, sometimes twice a day. And the key to watering really well is to make sure it goes through the bottom of the pot. Right. We want to make sure those roots get nice and wet. You want to see it actually yes. drain. Yeah, okay. yeah. A lot of people will get fooled because it'll flow over the top of the pot and then the bottom stays dry. Right. And then they don't know what's wrong with their flowers. So right. we want to make sure that their roots are nice and wet. Uh, but we don't want to overwater them, so it's kind of tricky. You got to have that nice balance. And I'm sure that all, that all depends too on the actual temperature that we're getting into at yes, the time of yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. As it gets into summer and we get those really, really hot temperatures, we want to make sure we watch them and water them twice right. or sometimes right. three times a day. Yeah, it's the price we pay for beauty, isn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, yes. But then you also love, and I do. I bought this last time. I really like this fertilizer. Yes. You guys yeah. In that. Yep. Jack's Triple Twenty is our favorite. Uh, we recommend everybody does it once a week for their baskets to keep them going. And the great thing about this triple 20 blend is it keeps the growth going, but then it also keeps the blooms. So nice. it's not just like a blossom one where it's just full and tight. We want them to also be long. So it's a general purpose yeah. that touches mm -hmm. all of yeah. it. Yeah. And then let's talk about Mother's Day. Tell me what's going on. We have our Mother's Day brunch, which is great. Uh, we make everything here from scratch. Uh, we have pastries, we have ham, we have quiches, all sorts of goodies. Uh, you need to make reservations online, so special treat for mom. And then each person who comes for our brunch, they get a coupon that they can use in the garden center. Wonderful. Um, and then even Saturday before, we're going to do a painting class. Nice. Yeah, so people can come, and if they if they do, if they already have plans on Mother's Day for brunch, they can come here and do a painting class with mom. Well, you know, I have to tell you that last Mother's Day, I actually brought my own mother here and it was absolutely stunning. The food was delicious. It was just a blast. So I would suggest you go to gardentime.tv. We'll pop you over to their website, sign up for this wonderful event, bring your mother and just have a beautiful Mother's Day. Thank you so much. It was, it's really lovely. Oh, thanks, William. <laughs> I'm getting ready to work in the garden and I have a great tip for you. You know how sometimes you take off your garden gloves and you have blisters on the palm of your hand? This is a great tip to prevent it. Use two gloves. Get a pair of surgical gloves and put those on first and then get your work glove to put on. This way the friction happens between the two gloves and not between the glove and the palm of your hand. You're all ready to work in the garden and have no blisters. That's our great tip of the week. Use two pair of gloves to prevent blisters. Since 1987, French Prairie Gardens has brought you the best in farm fresh produce, beautiful plants, and memorable family events. Spring is here, and now is the time to get your garden ready 
with our wide selection of bedding plants and hanging baskets. Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Gardens. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Celebrate a spring tradition, visit the Olda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs, tour Holda's Victorian home and gift shop. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. It's not too late to think of the taste of summer. Get your tomatoes now for a bountiful harvest. This week, our tomatoes are $2 each or three for $5. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. Nothing is more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis. And your chance to see the Queen of Vines is at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farms. To learn more about the garden, get directions, or learn about garden events, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. At Garland Nursery, you'll find... Top quality plants. Four generations of garden know-how. Fun and fantastic garden decor. And the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. I am at a hidden gem in Westland, the McLean House, and I'm with Mike, who's one of the um, board members here of the Friends, aren't you? Yes, been here for about 25 years. Yeah, this is just a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Tell us where it is. Well, it's in Westland, Oregon, and it's uh, in the Clackamas County. And uh, it's been here for, since 1922. And Dr. McLean purchased the property, and then he built this beautiful 17-room house, finished it in 1927. So he had quite a time. He, had, he was a physician in uh, Oregon City, but he handled full Clackamas County, and that's uh, beauty of what it is. He also started the HMO oh. uh, kind of theme for uh, way this back county. When. Wow, yeah. way back when. And really his family lived here, raised his children here. Five kids here and the, there's room for them. <laughs> 70 rooms and we rent and uh, have weddings and business meetings here and a lot of outdoor gardening and uh, it's a um, quite a unique place. It's very hidden though. A lot of people don't know about it. Well, that's why we're here today, but and it's so nice because it's part of the park system here in West Lynn. So really, if you're walking around, you can come and enjoy the gardens and these woodlands around here. One thing about West Lynn, it does have parks. This has to be happens to be the historical park and building, and it had an indigenous population uh, way back when. And then Hugh Burns came, and he was a pioneer. He was a um, blacksmith and he started a ferry across the uh, Willamette over to Oregon City. Wow. And Hugh Burns was kind of man and then he plotted this property and then uh, Dr. McLean, so it had the indigenous population, Hugh Burns and then Dr. McLean and then the best, the friends of the McLean house. Right. And that's something that we're putting on a gala this coming Saturday. Ah, so tell us a little bit about that because you need to support this, you need some funds and so you're having right. some fun going on. This is F-U-N, this is something else. <laughs> we, we have people making crepes. We have the Riverview Lions doing uh, pumpkin pies. We have uh, Bosky Dell bringing over her native plants. We have uh, petal heads. Oh, it's a unique mm -hmm. kind of uh, exotic nursery. That's something you have to come and see. And then there's gonna be music. We may have a jazz band. We have uh, music back on from uh, Jim Beatty. He's, uh, oh, wow, he he's has very well known. Jim Beatty, just passed away, but we were oh. going to have his music running in the background. And there's just my children activity. You have a toilet paper roll and some 
potting soil and a seed, oh. and you're in. Oh, we love children's projects, so that's great that you get the yes. gardeners in that. And then also a raffle and a silent auction to really help support this place. The, op, uh, the, the raffle is fairly good because it's only $5 a ticket, but if you win, $25 to maybe $300. Whoa. So that range, you should get a couple of tickets, maybe <laughs> five. We'll help. So, Mike, how do we find out about this? Where do we get all this information? The website like, is www, and that's mcleanhouse.org, dot org. And uh, it'll give you a lot of information about the gala, but a lot of the other activities we have. We have Solve Week, week coming up. That's uh, Earth Day, and it's our day to kind of clean up here. And then we're going to go to the Westland Park and Recreation. They're having an appreciation dinner over at Mary S. Young Court. There's about six parks that are participating in this. Really. And really, you depend on a lot of volunteers. So if you want to get involved in the volunteer aspect of this, go to the website, too, and you can find out ways to help out. Absolutely. You can put your hands in the dirt, <laughs> or they had one last year. It's called Wine and Weed. It's very interesting. <laughs> hey, that's the way to get them in. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Mike. And for more information, please go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over there to their website. You get all that information to come out here for all the fun going on. See you there. <laughs>of tulip bulbs transform the Iverson Farm into one of Oregon's most stunning events. The family invites you to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. Explore our tulip fields and market, kids' activities, food, and wooden shoe wine. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival open daily, now through April 29th. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. It's spring clearance time at Standard TV and Appliance. Save up to 70% on closeouts, floor models, and special purchases. Price cuts in every category, including washers and dryers. Ranges, top brand dishwashers, refrigerators, Simmons Beauty Rest mattresses, and more. When they're gone, they're gone. Spring clearance and soon. Standard TV and Appliance. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden and we're out back today in one of the greenhouses where we grow some of our thousands of hanging baskets and there is no plant that I am more excited about this spring than some of these begonias. You may have heard the phrase stop and smell the roses, not anymore. It's going to be stop oh, and smell the begonias. We have two new lines of scented begonias this year. The first one is a series of hanging basket begonias called Sentimentals. There's three different colors in the series and each one of them smell like some of the most beautiful fragrant roses you've ever had. We are very excited to have those this year. But besides the hanging baskets, we also have a series of begonias you'll be able to put in your pots and planters around your house. So let's head on over to one of our other greenhouses and take a peek. All you have to do around here is follow your nose and you will find these fragrant begonias. They smell so good. This is a series called Fragrant Falls. And as you can see, they're in a smaller pot, but they will work great in a porch or patio in some of your favorite pots. Put it next to your favorite rocking chair. And in the morning, when you go out to have your cup of coffee, boom, you are going to smell these begonias all day long. We are so excited. And you can find them all spring at Bauman's Farm and Garden. And to find more helpful tips and other cool plants like this, head on over to our YouTube channel and just search Bauman's Farm and Garden. Well, this morning I'm at Al's 
greenhouses. Usually we go to the Owls Garden Centers and talk to you about plants and all that kind of things at the retail, but today I'm actually at production. I'm with Dorothy, and Dorothy, you're part of the ownership here, aren't you? I am. Um, I am one of the owners, and I am in charge of the greenhouses. So it's so fun to come to like the back of the house. I mean, we're all interested in seeing where all the plants come from that are at the Owls stores. So really, um, this is one of your one of your greenhouses. How many do you have at this location? We have 87 greenhouses at this location alone. We have another location in Newburgh. We have another location in uh, Gresham also, but on this facility we have 87 houses and then other fields in addition. That is amazing. So, and really this doesn't happen overnight, really. This is, you're the third generation. Right. It started with my grandfather um, in Woodburn at our Woodburn store. That's the original site. And then my father came in and joined and it started expanding into plants. And then we outgrew the Woodburn store. We were in the back of the Woodburn store. We outgrew that and then we came out here. That is amazing. And really, so you're third generation and even some of the fourth generation are working at the stores and at the greenhouses. They are and we're excited about that and relieved. We're getting older, <laughs> they're young. They're, Passing it on. Yes, and they can help relieve us a little bit doing that. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about plants because we're in this beautiful house and we have some plants and you do some specialty things. So this one is just so cute. So this plant is, uh, it's a geranium actually oh. and it's called citronella and it is not known for its bloom, but if you smell it mm. and touch it, it smells like citronella. It does, so it keeps mosquitoes away. It does, oh, so fun. you can set that in the middle of your table and outside and instead of the candle or the other citronella things, that's kind of neat. That is cool. And then I see all these beautiful blooming hydrangeas. I know you grow them for our gardens, but these are for gifts for this time of year. Right, and so these we did as a specialty and they're different colors. There's three or four different sizes and we're doing them, trying to get them ready for Easter. Ah, oh, that is nice. Well, we have so much more to see, so let's go to one of the other houses. Great. So Dorothy, as we were walking to this house, we passed so many other houses. So what, what else do we see? Tell us viewers, our viewers. We passed through uh, so houses with some shrubs in it, um, vines, we're going a lot of that. Uh, we passed through a lavender house full of blooming beautiful. lavender and then other annuals that we saw. Now this is one of your long ones. It's amazing. So how many plants, how many flats do you have on the floor here? So we have 4,000 flats on the floor which is over 140,000 plants. Wow, because you have many of these. Man, there's many of these big houses. This is 250 feet, isn't it? It's, uh, it's a little bit short. It's about oh. 210 feet. Okay. <laughs> and I just know that because I ordered the poly for it. So. <laughs> Definitely. And then I noticed all these baskets and there's really a science behind the baskets. So the baskets we do, we try to uh, utilize all the space in the greenhouse and one of the spaces that it's hard to utilize is up above mm -hmm. because it's still heated, it's still using sure. all the heat, all the electricity. So everywhere, every house we passed, you'll see we tried to hang baskets. But we don't hang baskets everywhere. We try to hang baskets just on the aisles so that when they drip through, they don't drip on top of plants. Because it's all about quality, isn't it? It is for us. That's a big sticking point. And we really see it at all the stores. You see the, you, those beautiful plants and they just look beautiful here and then they look beautiful at your stores. Thank you. Well, thank you for everything, all this information, but we're gonna go talk to your brother about some more information. So we're gonna go over there. Thank you. Well, now I'm with another one of the owners. I'm with Mark Biggie. And Mark, what is your responsibility in the family business? So I'm one of the owners as well. Um, there's, we have Dorothy and I, and then another sister, Darcy, and of course, my dad. Uh, but I oversee the retail operations. Oh, fun, fun. But you hang out here a lot too, don't you? Uh, yes, I live very close, <laughs> and so I'm here a lot. <laughs> Well, we, when we were walking over, we saw some houses that had like different stages of plants. Some of them mm -hmm. were flowering, looked like they were ready to go to the stores, mm -hmm. but then some were little and just green. Yeah, so in the greenhouses, it's fun to come up here and see because I don't walk through them every day, but all the plants are always in stages. And the greenhouses are always about eight weeks to 10 weeks ahead of the retail stores. Oh. And so we're just gearing up for, store, for spring right now, but they've been planning and working on it. The baskets that we have in our stores, they had to plant eight to 10 weeks ago. Oh. And so they're always ahead of us. And so now they're already putting down crops that we'll be selling later in May oh. and even early June. And so they're always ahead of us. And every square inch of these greenhouses is there's always something down that we'll sell something. I'll think, oh good, we got through that house. And they'll <laughs> right come through and they'll fill it right back up. Well, that is one of the wonderful things about owls is that you're just constantly planting in fresh plants, but then you're also testing and trialing too. Yeah, Judy, that has to be probably one of the most rewarding or fun things about being a grower and a retailer is that we are always out there looking for new things. Oh. And so we get a chance to trial them. So what you see in these houses, you know, some of these pots, um, we'll grow these and we'll try new plants in them and then we'll take them into the stores 
and we'll see customers' reactions. You know, if they all sell out real quick, then we know, ah, we have a winner. Sure, sure. And we'll put that in our other production. So this is a great example. Um, we trialed this petunia last year. It's beautiful. And now this yeah. year, the customers loved it. And so this is the Sweet Petunia series, and so we added a couple of those to our premium annual line this year. That is so nice. So we're constantly trialing things, and they don't all work. Sometimes they're a flop, and we say, okay, we know not to grow right, them. Right, right. But sometimes they work. So this was a spectacular one. Um, here, the Headliner series of Petunias. These were super popular, the, um, the night sky and the pink last year. And so we tried again, and we added a new one this year, this wow. burgundy, and it's just been spectacular. Wow, I think they're gonna be really popular, yeah, really cool. And then you have some other ones on your side too. Yeah, they're just some other things that we've tried, you know, the different varieties of petunias. Uh, petunias are the biddens. This one was great last year, this Be Alive. Beautiful. It's a, it's a really unique little color of flower and a great compact grower. Yeah, your combinations in your baskets are always stunning. So you could see that your grower goes out and you guys go out and really find the best in the market. Yeah, they do a great job. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to one more area and see what else that you do to make those plants look so wonderful for us as customers and for our gardens. So let's go over there. Let's go. Mark, we're on a different part of the property now, so where are we and what is its purpose? So this is what we call our perennial greenhouse, mm -hmm. and so it's a little bit of a different style greenhouse. As you can see, as we're walking in here, it feels just like it's outside. Yeah. That's because the roof opens and closes on this greenhouse. It's a retractable roof greenhouse, so we like to grow all of our perennials down here because it gives you the ambient temperature outside. And so the plant grows in here just like it will in a customer's yard. And so the plants are grown locally for the local yards. You just take them, plant them, and they'll do really well that way. Ah, so there's no lag time because they're not in a warm house. They're just like it is outside here in yep. Oregon. <laughs> yep, they're used to they're used to our rain, our cold, all the weather we get here. We just close the roof in the winter time when it gets really cold or you know if it's going to get real windy or a lot of rain we can close it but most of the time we run it wide open. Oh, that is one that is in, amazing because you don't think about that. You think they have to be pampered. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then I see some other plants around here where you have um, some fields and then some other greenhouses of shrubs. Yeah, so we do. We grow down here, we grow all of our perennials and we grow our shrubs. And it's kind of fun. We look at this mass of plants yeah. and they all go through all of our retail stores. Wow. It's, it's fun to look down here and see these are the perennials that are going to wind up on our tables all season long. Yeah. So, you know, when you see the owl's um, pot here, it says grown by owls, you know that it's a quality plant and it's grown right in our backyard. So if you have any other questions, please go to Garden Time. We'll click you over to the owl's website sites and go and visit and pick up some plants for your garden. Mark, thanks so much. Thank you, Judy. Thank you for watching today. Don't worry, little buddy. You can grow up to be a big tulip like these guys. <laughs> we also wanted to thank all of you that came out for Garden Palooza this year and to the Subaru Earth Day event. We also wanted to thank Bartlett Tree Experts for their great pruning demonstration. For more information about today's show, please go to Gardentime.tv. We wanted to thank you for watching today, and we'll do this again next week, right here on Garden Time. One thousand one hundred twelve. One thousand one hundred thirteen. William, what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to GardenTime.tv and hit the Facebook icon, which is in the top right-hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. I love the Jordan Kent Skill Camp. And as a busy mom, it is really nice to have time to get things done. Smile for our followers. You bet your butt next episode. Got a lot done today. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.